Oh, hi there. Sorry about that. I was getting a little ahead of us here looking at the, the list comparing EXISH to other molecular diagnostic techniques. And I gotta tell you, it's quite a substantial list. Uh, to start things off, we have 30 probes available right now with 75 along the way, while others have tops 8 probes. So right now we can offer you so many more diagnostic results uh, and, and targets than the other technologies can. Um, on top of that, we talked earlier about using single-sided DNA strands versus double-sided DNA strands. All the other technologies, or most of them, use double-sided DNA. Why is that bad? Well, first you've got to use toxic formamide and a very hot denaturation temperature of 95 degrees uh, centigrade in order to get that DNA strand, the double-sided DNA strand, to separate from itself. And then, once you eliminate the formamide and the 95 degrees, oftentimes it just wants to connect back up to itself again. So you end up rinsing off all of your uh, target and your whole probe during the rinse steps, and you don't really have uh, a highly specific, uh, uh, strong signal to interpret in the end. With our technology, because we use one very long single-stranded DNA, we're able to hybridize at a much higher temperature. We get to hybridize at 62 degrees, and because it's one side, we don't have to worry about it connecting up to anything except for the intended target. Now at 62 centigrade, we have so many base pairs and the bond is so strong that we hybridize and get that probe to connect to its target in just 60 minutes. Whereas other technologies, because the probes are much shorter and they have to go at lower temperatures, because that magnetism between their DNA strand and the target is weaker, takes sometimes up to 48 hours to accomplish. So with other technologies, you're looking sometimes at two days in order to get a diagnostic result where exists one, two hours, tops, that's it. Now, on top of this, other technologies utilize uh, most of the time one target on their probe, either at the tail or the head of the probe. We have target expressed throughout our entire probe, throughout the entire sequence. So again, you're going to get a much stronger, more reliable signal utilizing EXISH than these other technologies. And the best part about it, because it's like IHC and it utilizes DAB and fast red on some of the probes, you get to keep your morphology and keep your, uh, your pathologist happy because they get to still see the tissue structures. We're not looking any longer at dot counting and, and fluorescent dyes. You have an archivable tissue slide that looks just like any other IHC procedure you would run except without the background problems and it provides you with a much more specific result and a stronger uh, signal to interpret. Our probes, even in comparison with other molecular diagnostic techniques, have a much better storage situation. Again, they can be stored at room temperature and have a two-year shelf life for the lyophilized probes or a one-year shelf life for the probes that are pre-constituted, whereas other technologies have a very short shelf life and are extremely temperature dependent. But you'll note later on when we go over the procedure how little chemicals and reagents you need to utilize the probe in your lab. Really, we're, we're talking distilled water and PBS and all your normal IHC reagents, and if you don't have antidigoxin or proteinase K, then you need those, but that's it. No toxic formamide or any of these other crazy chemicals and different rinse buffers you need with these other technologies. What you're looking at right here is a visual depiction of the other technologies that are out there. You'll note that the various forms of fluorescent in situ hybridization and chromogenic in situ hybridization all use double-stranded DNA probes. And we talked about the problems with this before. Double-stranded DNA probes have to be denatured to separate those DNA strands. And after that process is over, oftentimes the DNA strands just connect back up together again and you lose all of your target during the rinse steps. Express in situ hybridization is closest to the other technologies that utilize oligoprobes or single-stranded probes. The main difference, EXISH utilizes much longer sequences and has targets spread throughout the entire chain inside of that probe. And what we get out of that is a much stronger bond, which allows us to hybridize at a higher temperature and get it done in an hour, instead of with a weaker bond, sometimes taking up to 48 hours or two days to hybridize. 
And because we have targets spread throughout our entire probe instead of just one at the tail or the head, we have a much stronger signal. Oh, hi there. Yeah, I know. I got stuck doing fish instead of exish. Um, I hope my pathologist likes to count dots because he's really in for a number on this one. Okay, so the number one reason why you should choose exish over other technologies Gosh, I could name lots of reasons, but here's a great one right here. Using fluorescent dyes and dot counting that we see in fish, you can't archive the slide. The, the fluorescent dyes fade and your pathologist is stuck taking a while interpreting the diagnostic result. Where with Exish, again like IHC with a strong signal and no background, it's a quick yes or no. No dot counting at all. Wondering how to bring Exish into your lab? We thought you'd never ask. Do you have a laboratory oven? Fantastic, my work is done. Just kidding, but really, if you have a laboratory oven, you're almost there. It just needs to be capable of holding 62 degrees centigrade. And if you don't have some type of a tray like the Synport tray that you can use as a humidity chamber, then simply pick one up. We offer ovens, humidity chambers, trays, all everything you see here at American Master Tech. So what you're going to do once you get this tray, if you want to use a laboratory oven, is you're going to fill it up with water just to the base of where the slides sit. And uh, you're going to preheat the oven to 62 degrees. And you're going to hybridize the slide for an hour. And what that water does is it keeps the tray inside extremely humid. We don't want the probe to dry out. It's extremely important that the probe stay intact and, uh, and moist uh, through the entire hour in order to have successful results. Uh, if you are going to use an oven, we would recommend a digital oven. Usually they do hold temperature better than an analog oven. Uh, that 62 degrees is critical because we're able to hybridize in such a short amount of time due to uh, the length of our DNA probes. Uh, it is critical that we do hold the temperature very specifically. If you don't have an oven, you can utilize a humidity water bath, such as what you see here. This is called the My Bath. We also have this at American Master Tech. And uh, basically, it's a water bath with a lid. And the lid is shaped in a way to allow the water as it evaporates up to trickle back down the sides and go back into the water bath without dripping onto the probe and diluting it. So, either way, this is a nice small footprint if you don't already have an oven or, or uh, some other device you can use to hybridize those probes. If you already have a hybridizer, such as the Thermo Fisher uh, Thermobrite, I want to uh, give you a word of caution, and that is uh, this hybridizer is designed to work on other molecular technologies with shorter uh, strands and that hybridize at lower temperatures. Remember, over a long period of time, sometimes 48 hours. Most of these hybridizers aren't designed to work as high as 62, and while you may be able to get it up to 62 degrees, the environment won't stay humid inside of there and your probe may dry out. So make sure you run a few tests at your lab, but we would definitely recommend an oven or a humidity chamber like this over a stock hybridizer out there that may be designed to function at a much lower temperature than we're used to in Exish in order to get those rapid results. So, what else do you need to perform Exish in your lab? Not much. First, you need some pipetters. A 10 to 100 microliter pipetter and a 100 to 1000 microliter pipetter. Next, you need some PBS 7.4. And let's face it, every lab has PBS 7.4. But if you don't, we've got it and we're more than happy to sell it to you. Steam distilled water. Really? Are you kidding me? Next, you need Protonese K. Got to be able to digest all those ribonuclear proteins that are covering up our target. Target retrieval, you know. And you need a probe, of course, for the target you're looking for, such as this Kappa light chain that I'm holding in my hand right now. Let's not forget the standard ancillaries like a primary antibody to attach to our probes, such as antidotoxin. And the nice thing, anti-dig is the only primary antibody used on all of our probes. It's the only primary antibody you need. Next, you'll need a high-quality anti-mouse polymer HRP, like MasterTech Polymer HRP or Docos Envision. This is really critical. We've tried lots of brands, and the only two brands that were of a high enough quality to provide consistent and reliable results were the MasterTech Polymer HRP and Docos Envision.
And then there's DAB, diaminobenzene, stored in a refrigerator, doesn't work very well if you don't, but come on, everybody knows that. You're doing IHC, right? But seriously, any high quality DAB, it'll work. Mix it up a couple days early. Nobody likes young DAB. It takes too long to develop. You'll get a little darker, more bolder results if it's been sitting around a day or two, but seriously, any high quality DAB, it'll work, no problem. Now that you know the equipment and reagents you need, come on over and we'll show you how easy it is to perform an exist procedure in your lab.